Hi there. I recently had the privilege of interviewing Alicia Bosov in New Zealand. She and her husband and her 11 month old baby recently moved there from South Africa. They've been there now for one month. I stumbled upon one of her videos on a New Zealand Facebook group and she kindly agreed to do a short interview with myself and we've picked five questions that we felt might help South Africans busy with the process of moving to New Zealand or those who are planning to do so. Yes. So um, we've got a few, I've got a few questions that I felt uh, the receive people would, um, would, would, between them, they would want to know um, if, uh, uh, how hard is the proce procedure to, to move to New Zealand. So um, I've, I didn't focus on the questions that I was um, going to ask that I've put on the immigration uh, webpage. So I thought I'd, I'd make some new ones. So uh, question number one, what inspired you to move from South Africa to New Zealand? Were there any particular challenges you faced during the process of, the immig of immigrating? So the main reason we moved was for uh, security. Um, the main thing that pushed us to do it is when we had our daughter um, and I was at home with her and I just wanted to go outside and have a walk. Um, I only could, could do it in a complex and uh, we were very limited and that was one of the reasons we decided to move. Um, it's for safety and um, there were a few other things um, like load shedding but especially the area we were living in in Pretoria East, we would get power outages. Uh, I think in 2019 or 2020, we were without power for 13 or 14 days. And then I think the year after for nine days and frequently for two, three days. And sometimes we would be without water as well. So the service delivery and stuff on that side was really bad. And uh, so there were a few things and um, yeah, so when I was 19, I went to New York for two years and I worked and lived there and I experienced a bit of just somewhere else that's not South Africa. So, um, be, yeah. yeah, so I knew um, how different it could be and uh, it's just New Zealand is beautiful. So we decided to give it a try. It is. It's, it's definitely, mm -hmm. it's, well, it's been on my bucket list for ages. Um, and um, Australia was, um, was was where the work was, so we, we came here first. But uh, mm. you know, we'll 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 come pay a visit. Yeah. Question number two: How does the lifestyle in New Zealand differ from South Africa? Are there any cultural or social differences that you had that you had to adjust to? Um, so we haven't been here that long, but a few things that I have noticed um, in the workplace, especially. Uh, people are very uh, serious, if I could say it like that, about the tea time and lunch time. Yeah. Uh, they take it, and like some people would go home for that hour lunch time and come back, or go sit in the staff room and read a book for an hour. Where I would, I'm used to eating at my desk and finishing work during the day. So that's one mm -hmm. thing I wasn't used to. Um, and yeah, like women here do uh, like trade work yeah. they work really hard um, they, they do pipe work physical manual labor um, and yeah just a few things uh, like men will call women uh, bro and mates and stuff like that that you're not really used to but yeah but people here are really really friendly that's it's, it feels like you're, you're in Australia it's the same thing uh, I mean I, I drive past a pass a couple of uh, construction sites every morning and there'll be two or three women between them working as hard as the men mm. and uh, I mean I, I never had any doubt they couldn't do it it's just in South Africa there's this I would almost say a backward way of thinking about women cannot do things because men need to do it and there is a there's a physical aspect to it and, and, and a point of view that men is the strongest and all of that but it's it's amazing that you come to this part of the world and that barrier or that boundary or whatever you want to call it doesn't exist mm. everyone's equal and that is amazing yeah. right uh question number three almost you can almost i'm almost releasing you to go to bed 
what do you miss most of South Africa? Now, I know when I looked at this question, I'm like, ah, she's probably won't, she doesn't miss South Africa yet because she just left, but I'm going to give it a go. And what do you appreciate most about living in New Zealand? So I obviously miss my friends and family. Um, I'm very close with my mom and my dad and sister-in-law. So I definitely miss family. Um, and the other thing I miss is food, South African food. Um, oh. I don't know. It's just our opinion. And, uh, but uh, we've, I feel like the food here is a bit bland. Um, I've had some good food, but mm. Yeah, I don't know, and spices and stuff like that, and sauces. So I'm still, we're still new, so we still need to get used to uh, yeah. all the products on this side and cooking. What's what you're gonna cook? So I miss South African food definitely, um, but I mean there are quite a few South African shops where you can buy <laughs> biltong yeah. and things like that. So, but yeah, definitely family and the food. Um, I miss and something else um, this might sound silly but I was talking to a co-worker that's also a South African and I said I miss the convenience of knowing where everything is yes. um, it, I don't know if it makes sense but yeah just getting in the car and knowing where you're going or knowing yeah. where to get things because here you buy things where you thought okay you buy it at clicks or disking or mm. It does. You don't necessarily buy it at the same type of store. Yeah. So it's just getting used to all those types of uh, things. So, yeah. Now you're going to, and there's one thing you're going to realize after a while. I never really listened to Afrikaans music when I was back home. The longer I'm away from home, the more Afrikaans music I'm listening to. Oh, and is I it? I don't realize it. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm starting to turn into my brother. <laughs> and then as for missing the food i've got like a checklist of things that it's like a subscription really when i go into any south african shop i always buy a box of matabella pop i buy bry pop i buy i, I buy uh, <laughs> boltong drovors obviously and then it depends on what my budget is for the day i'll either buy a packet of fudge or or cook sisters now oh, no. I, I do often try and make my own but yes. 80 percent of the time it's a disaster so <laughs> it's just better just to go and buy it from tani sar sarki from uh, brisbane or wherever she is she just she knows how to make it right thanks for that that's that's brilliant and um it's it's remarkable how how quickly that longing set in even just a month after leaving mm. it's um yeah uh, and don't worry about missing the family you'll get over it <laughs> just just if your family's watching, I'm sorry, I'm just kidding. <laughs> right, let's, let's talk about the work because I know you and your husband are both working and by the sounds of it, you guys are really busy. Uh, one thing that I need to point out and I say it with pride is um, the few of the stuff that you've pointed out, I see it here as well in Australia. And um, one thing about South Africans, when we come over here, we come to work. We don't come to send dawdle or count our fingers and toes we actually come in to do a job um, mm. because we're grateful for it we, we, we're not taking it for granted um, because if you, you'd be lucky to get a similar work with pay back home and um, it's um, I don't think that ever dies out in, in, a, in a South African expat I've, I've met South Africans that's been here for 20 30 years they're still good hard-working people right question number four um, how has your experience been with finding employment in New Zealand? Are there any notable differences in the job market compared to South Africa? Sorry, that last sentence was... <laughs> so, um, we were quite lucky finding jobs because uh, I know some people, they struggle. Um, but we were really, really lucky. Um, what I did is I used Seek, LinkedIn and Facebook groups, but what I did on the Facebook groups, you can search on the group with a keyword. Yeah. And we both have experience uh, in the compressor industry. So I went on the groups and I searched compressor or compressors. And yeah. I looked for previous posts with that keyword. And I found like a year, year and a half old post of uh, a job for uh, someone in a compressor for a compressor company. 
So I thought, okay, I have nothing to lose. So I contacted him, well, messaged that guy and asked him, okay, listen, I know it's an old post, but does he know anyone else in the compressor industry? Or if maybe they would want someone soon again? And he actually said, okay, no, it's fine. Send Chris's CV through. And a few days later, he had an interview and a few days later, he had an offer. Um, so I saw, I saw that video, actually. That's one of the videos of yours that I saw. And I, oh, okay. Yeah, really good. I felt your excitement. That was, yeah. that was great. So we were really lucky. And then I think a week or two later, they had a position for the exact job that I did here so in South Africa. So, yeah. And then I got the job as well at the same company. Well, that's brilliant. Well, well yeah. done. And congratulations for that. Because once that's mm-hmm. sorted, the yeah, the rest is just it's just mm. easy. just a matter of adapting. Um, just as a side question, which I don't think I've uh, put down, but is it cold over there? Is it like is it or... at the moment? Yes, but when we came, uh, it was colder than it is now. Yeah. Um, but it's been a bit rainy for a few days, so it's chilly, but it's not really cold. I mean, I'm wearing open-toed shoes and. Yeah, we, we've, we're know. always we're always like on the look because we're in Melbourne and trust me, Melbourne has horrible weather. It's just oh, okay. it's uh, it's wonderful in the summer, but it's like you'll have all four seasons in one day. It'll be raining, oh. it'll be it'll be cooking. It's just all over the place. Um, mm-hmm. And now with the, the the temperature changing, we're actually feeling that ice cold winter, and we've got so much so many friends that just left for Brisbane and Queensland and chasing that endless summer and every time they post a photo i'm just upset anyway uh, I, I figured i'd ask so <laughs> question number five and this is the, the last one and i think that will answer a lot of questions for people um, looking to move to new zealand because i think um, after australia it's pretty much number one um, for for south african expats uh, have you had the opportunity to explore new zealand's natural scenery and tourist attractions uh, what are some of your some of your favorite places to visit um, or activities to do in your free time? Um, also, a bit of a hard question. I know you haven't been there that long yet, but I'm pretty so, sure you can explore a bit. Yeah, so we've been here a month today officially, um, and we've uh, Chris has been sick twice, and what? I've and I've been sick once, and I had food poisoning or was a stomach bug, oh. and my daughter Olivia was sick twice so in one month yeah so we haven't had a lot time to explore um but uh we did go to Taranga that's about 45 minutes from here and that's by the beach so it has a Cape Town vibe um so even though the weather was a bit miserable it was really nice and uh, we've gone to a few places around here to some of the lakes and some of the falls and it's really beautiful Every time I drive to work in the morning, I'm just like in awe of how beautiful it is. Oh. So it's it's really, really nice. So we haven't really had a chance to explore much um, because we were sick a few times. Um, but what we've seen so far has really, really been nice. And what was also a lot of these places that you could explore, like the nature places um, or the hiking trails, most of them are free. Um, where in South Africa, I found you have to pay for a lot of them. So that's yeah. also something cars. Yeah, we, we haven't been back in many years. So yeah, we've, um, uh, I wasn't even aware that you have to pay to just visit places. Um, thank you for your time. Um, I think oh, thank it's you. 20 to 11 now, is it? Where you yes. are? Well, thank you so much. And tell your husband, um, I say thank you. And I look forward to chat- having a chat to him uh, at some stage. Thank you for taking the time for watching our first immigration story. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did making it. And I'm hoping there will be a couple of more of those, um, at least one a month. Um, and if you're out there and you've just moved to, doesn't matter what country, and you would like to tell your story, please get in contact. We're gonna mix it up a bit. We're gonna get a couple of questions there that you'll be comfortable with and something that you can share with the rest of the South African community who's looking to move to overseas and chase that better lifestyle, the security for their children. And your story is what will motivate them to take that first step. Thank you.